<laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Steven Wakabayashi and you're listening to Yellow Glitter, Mindfulness Through the Eyes and Soul of a Gay Asian. Every episode I share with you what's on my mind or things I'm struggling with and how I'm working through it to help you live a more mindful, fabulous life. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. COVID-19 is still rampant all around the world, especially here in New York City in the United States. So please be safe and healthy during this time. If you do not have a face mask yet, highly recommended. The CDC has new recommendations on wearing face masks. They recommend people to have something covering your face at all times when you're in public spaces. With that said, this episode I share with you a recent live stream I did with two amazing guests to talk about what's happening around us with COVID-19 and some advice on how to stay mentally and physically healthy as well as managing sudden shifts in employment. Ning Jo, he him, is a child and adolescent psychiatry fellow at New York Presbyterian Hospital. He specializes in gender, sexuality, and cultural influences on mental health. And Marty G. Cummings, they, them, is a candidate for New York City Council District 7, a drag artist, comedian, activist, and spouse. They currently sit on Community Board 9, serving the people of Upper Manhattan, and are an advisory on the Mayor's Nightlife Council. On this episode, we talk about establishing mindfulness to stay present and peaceful, managing physical health with COVID-19, and what are recommendations on staying safe from this virus, maintaining mental health with balance and routine during this shelter-in-place that we are all undergoing, establishing boundaries to prioritize ourselves, staying connected and navigating social media and news during a pandemic, understanding trauma response during turbulent times, what are some opportunities we have during these difficult times, managing the sudden shifts to work and employment, and resources to help those facing unemployment. Now, the audio isn't perfect, So bear with me while I figure out how to record live stream with great audio for myself and my guests for future episodes. But I definitely wanted to share this episode out with my various podcast listeners to listen in on some of these two guests' amazing, amazing advice. Now, without further ado, our chat with Ning and Marty. Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to our live stream. And we're so excited to have you. This is Managing Change in Turbulent Times. And I'm your host, Stephen Wakabayashi. He and his. I host support groups for queer Asians here in New York City and run a podcast called Yellow Glitter, which is mindfulness from the perspective of a queer Asian. And I'm joined by two amazing guests today. And why don't I let them introduce themselves? Uh, Ning, do you want to go first? Uh, Sure. My name is Ning. I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, I'm currently a child and adolescent psychiatry fellow at New York Presbyterian. And I have a specific focus on gender, sexuality, and cultural influences on mental health. I'm excited to be here today. Amazing. Marty, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, yeah, I'm uh, Marty Cummings, um, uh, they, them, pronouns, I'm a drag artist and a candidate for city council in the 7th District of New York. Amazing. And if you have any questions, for those of you just joining us, just post in the comments and we will get to the questions as we do the presentation. Cool. And so we have a pretty jam-packed agenda for all of us. We're going to start off with a little bit of mindfulness and then get into a little section with me where we talk a little bit about how to stay physically and mentally healthy during COVID-19. Right afterwards, we're going to have a section on how we are all coping with it, Marty, Ning, and I, just on how we're setting up balance and routine while we are sheltering in place during quarantine. And then right afterwards, we'll have a little moment where we talk about trauma response, how we're adapting to the current situation 
And afterwards, we have a little bit of time with Marty to talk about this sudden shift in employment that a lot of us are facing, whether it's going digital or just becoming unemployed, uh, and what are some of the resources you have available. And then at the end, we'll have a little opening Q&A for any one of you guys to give us questions. Cool, cool, cool. amazing. And so as we start off with a little bit of mindfulness, I don't want to take us through an entire meditation exercise, but I thought it would be great to just give ourselves 60 seconds of silence, just stillness. And as we kind of just prop ourselves up, if you're sitting in a chair, uh, ground your feet in the ground. If you're sitting on your bed or the ground, ground your butt in the ground. And let's just take 60 seconds to just collect ourselves. And for many of us, we're finishing up a work day or we're waking up from a nap. And um, let's just also set our intention of just what we want to get out of this session as well. And so with that, I have the clock up for 60 seconds. If you, if you just want to close your eyes too, uh, we can do that. I'll close my eyes. And so let's start in three, two, one. Notice how your breathing starts to slow down. Just take a couple breaths in and out, in and out. seconds. Three, two, one. Mm, great. Hi, everyone. I see your comments, Frankie, Eric. Okay. So with that, we're going to get into a little section with me to share what is happening right now and what are some of the advice that he has uh, working at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Hi, Ning. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so the first question I have for you, what are some of the current recommendations that you have on staying safe with COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the, the um, few things that you can do to really stay safe, one, wash your hands. Uh, can't emphasize that enough. Um, we believe that the main way that people get infected is, you know, touching something and then touching their face. Um, so washing your hands is super important, at least 20 seconds. There's lots of different songs that you can do for that time, like the happy birthday song, the ABCs. There's different pop songs also that you can do, um, like Staying Alive. Um, so that's, that's a big one. Um, if you don't have soap and water, then using um, at least 60% uh, alcohol, like hand sanitizer. Um, it's also, you know, when do you want to wash your hands, especially after you blow your nose, cough, sneeze, um, after you use the bathroom, before eating, um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I kind of mentioned this already, but avoiding touching your, your face, your eyes, nose, your mouth. Uh, I know we do that a lot um, kind of subconsciously, so it can be really hard to to change that habit, but really trying hard to, to develop awareness when you're doing it and start to, to, um, to try to, you know, minimize touching your face. Um, another huge one is really the, basically distancing yourself from, from other people. Um, you know, you've heard about social distancing, um, staying at least six feet away from other people. Uh, the two main reasons for this are, one, you know, avoiding contact with people who might be sick, um, and and 
right now in New York, that really could be anyone because we have such high numbers here. Um, and the other, the other reason is in case you might be sick yourself then stopping that transmission to other people. Um, I would also recommend at this point, like really not socializing or meeting up with other people, even if it's just one person, because right now, because we have such high numbers in New York, we basically, um, I think, should assume that, uh, you know, other people have it and, we, and you want to protect yourself, you want to protect other people. Um, another one is, so if you are getting sick, then it's so important to stay home. Um, the main, we might get into this later, but the main symptoms, you know, fever, cough, shortness of breath. Uh, mm -hmm. There can be other ones like GI symptoms like diarrhea um, and, uh, and sore throat. But, but if you have any of those symptoms, even if they're very mild, it's so important to, to stay home um, for, for yourself and then for other people as well. Um, if you do have to cough or sneeze, um, you know, do it into your elbow um, or into a tissue and then throwing away the tissue uh, and then washing your hands. Um, and then, um, you know, this one has been kind of controversial, but right now I would recommend wearing a mask going out. Um, it doesn't have to be like a surgical or N95 mask, but it can be a bandana or, or a cloth, but some kind of, um, you know, face covering right now. And I think the CDC has been thinking about making that an official recommendation. And I think um, mm -hmm. some of the reason is that people can have no symptoms at all and be contagious. And it seems like people are contagious like one to two days before they start showing symptoms. Uh, so it, it's one way to protect other people, protect yourself by, by wearing that mask. Um, and then cleaning and disinfecting, you know, surfaces that are frequently touched uh, in your home like the doorknob, counters, um, you know, tabletops, um, light switches, uh, your phones, um, keyboards, that kind of stuff. So, uh, and a lot of the household cleaners um, should just be fine, do just fine mm -hmm. for disinfecting. Um, and then finally, I think it would be good to be prepared to potentially quarantine for two weeks. So making sure you have um, some food and, you know, your, if you have prescription medications, having a supply of that. So mm -hmm. I think those are the basics of how to, to stay safe. Um, again, a huge one is the, you know, touching the, the face. Um, and so I do recommend carrying hand sanitizer um, when you go out. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to wear gloves, but anytime you touch a surface, then you can like use some hand sanitizer mm -hmm. um, at, at that moment. Yeah. What do you recommend for those who start exhibiting symptoms that are aligned with COVID-19? And when do you recommend somebody to go to the ER? Yeah. So again, the, yeah, great question. The main symptoms are again, like fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. um, but there can be other symptoms too, like sore throat, um, you know, some of the GI or like diarrhea, nausea, that kind of stuff can happen to you more rarely. Mm -hmm. And then also um, like runny nose can be pretty rare too. So there can be some atypical or unusual symptoms. Um, the main, you know, the main, basically a lot of people will have um, more mild courses, in which case it's best to just stay home. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's not really any um, approved treatments for, for this disease. Um, there's a lot of studies and tr clinical trials going on, but nothing yet, um, you know, officially recommended. Um, and so most of the care is supportive care anyway. So staying hydrated, making sure that you're taking care of your physical body. Um, now the time to go to the hospital really is if you have shortness of breath. So if it's hard to breathe at all, that's the time to go to the hospital. Um, if you have kind of persistent chest pain or pressure in the chest, that could be another reason to go. Um, if you have like bluish lips or face, um, that can be a sign that you're not getting enough oxygen, that's a reason to go. Um, and then if you have kind of new confusion or kind of inability to arouse, I guess this would not be maybe you noticing this, but other people noticing this. 
um, that can be a sign that that your your not your brain is not getting enough oxygen and, and you do need to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, unless you're having that kind of that those severe symptoms, it's really best to stay out of the hospital and stay out of the emergency room, um, just because I think uh, you know there are risks with going to the hospital and more risks of potential exposure. So and uh, so kind of trying to minimize that. Got it. And what resources do you have that people can check out for more reliable news? I know every media organization right now is putting COVID-19 in every single headline possible. And it seems yeah. like we're so inundated with so many news, advice, tips on what to do. So right. what do you recommend? Right. So I do think the CDC has a nice website that has very like user-friendly information about the uh, you know about the coronavirus and what to do to stay healthy um the they they have not yet officially recommended you know using masks to go outside but i think that will probably be coming soon um so i do think the cdc website is a is a good resource um aside from that like i've been getting daily you know news from from new york presbyterian hospital um uh so that's been an information source for me i've like going to the New York Times for, for information. Um, Johns Hopkins does have a coronavirus resource center too that, um, that, that you know, I have found um, it has some good information as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, if you wanted to pick one place to get information about the coronavirus and kind of what to do, then I would say probably the CDC website. Um, and mm -hmm. then, you know, I have found for just daily news updates that the New York Times has, has uh, been a good source of information. Yeah. Amazing. And then last question I have for you is just around going outdoors and people wanting to work out or stay physically fit. What are your recommendations with that? Yeah, so I think if it's possible to go outside without interacting with anyone else, then I think that's fine. I think what's hard is that, especially when it's a good day, a lot of people have the same idea. And then, you know, I have gone out and I've seen like Central Park can be pretty crowded actually, or there, so I would use your judgment. If it looks like there's a lot of people out, then I would probably avoid, you know, as if you can stay at least six feet away from other people, um, mm -hmm. then you can take that into consideration. Um, yeah. You know, I think there's a balance here though because there's also it's hard to stay inside in our small new york apartments you know indefinitely as well um so i think it can be you know it can be fine to go outside as long as you really take precautions and you know i, I recommend wearing a mask um i'd re recommend carrying hand sanitizer and then really staying you know away from other people so if you can find parts of the city then that really are pretty isolated that you know i think that would be fine um otherwise i i think if you can if you have space to exercise in your apartment i know times of um you know there are tons of like fitness videos that are coming out mm -hmm. you know yoga fitness classes um that kind of stuff so there is mm -hmm. a lot of content out there for what to do when you're physically at home mm -hmm. uh, so i you know i would consider that too Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now we're going to shift a little bit and just have it be a discussion between us three in terms of just what has worked for us and what hasn't worked for us during this shelter in place. Uh, you know, it's not just us here in New York, other states are starting to now quarantine and people in Italy, they've been doing it for a month now. And so first question for us, uh, Marty, if you want to start, what are some of the challenges you faced uh, during a shelter at home period? Well, I think some of the challenges that I faced are probably pretty, pretty similar to a lot of um, New Yorkers. You, it's, a, it's a huge shift to, we're in a very bustling city and then to just go from being on the subway every day and being around people every day and, and, you know, the coffee shop in the morning and, the, you know, whatever, like, we're all busy, no matter what borough or 
job we have. We're all busy on the go in this city. And so it's, it's a huge emotional shift to then just be like, okay, I'm in my house again. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are we going to do today? Oh, from the bathroom to the living room. And then the studio. So fun, you know? Um, so I think it's important for people to um, make sure that, you know, I, I, I like that you talked about exercise videos and, and whatnot, not just taking care of your your health, protecting yourself from this virus and protecting other people from the virus, but also uh, and not just taking care of your physical health, but taking care of your spiritual and mental health as well. I think that's so important. And so I know you have this in your notes for later, but, you know, for me, I, I have to set a routine for myself. Today was a luxury because I just happened to take a nap, which like, I don't. Yeah. Too often, and I um that was nice, but you know, I I need to have a routine. So I set, you know, okay, four times a week I'm still gonna do drag. <laughs> so I have mm -hmm. a routine for myself. And how are you setting it up? Are you putting in like a calendar? Are you putting post its on the wall? How do you remind yourself? I just said okay, Friday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and yeah. Friday we're gonna do shows. Yeah. You know, because I want to stay as active as I was uh, when we weren't in quarantine. Yeah. Um, and I also think it's important like if you're working from home, to set up an office space that's like designated that space in your apartment, even if it's a studio apartment, you know, find a space and that way you can still separate work from home because I think that's a big thing uh, mm -hmm. for mental health is separating your work from your home life. And now that you're, those are intertwined, like really finding that balance. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like getting outside and getting some fresh air. Like uh, if you, if you do go outside though, like make sure you're six feet away from people and, Wear your mask. I think that the mayor just said today that New Yorkers should wear the mask. You know, the CDC hasn't said it yet. Um, yeah. And then part of my routine is also like checking in with different elected officials that I'm like close with and being like, okay, what's the tea? Like, what's going on? What can I share and what should I not share? You know, to really ensure that proper information is getting out there because I think it's very common in today's kind of culture of America to spread misinformation online by just sharing a headline instead of reading an article. So it's important to know exactly what you're sharing. And what about you, Ning? What challenges have you faced as you transition from even just everyone around you is now just online all the time, posting everything? There's like 50 live stream icons on my Instagram. I'm like, it's like, what, what do I do? So, so how has this uh, transition been for you? Yeah. I think similar to Marty, it's just been such a yeah. huge shift from life before. I mean, I loved going out and, you know, just even commuting to work, there's a lot of different steps to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And all of that has changed. And, and yeah, so that's been tough. I think feeling isolated has been really tough. So really not having contact with people. I live by myself here. Um, so that, I think that was especially hard at the beginning. Um, and then I think the physical health thing too, peace, like not being able to go to the gym and work out and, you know, mm -hmm. I started running again, which I hadn't run for years, but, you know, I mm -hmm. feel like there's, um, have to be thinking creatively about how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that has been a big shift. Um, mm -hmm. I agree with the routines and I, for me, I find it's so easy if I don't have like a schedule routine to like all the time goes by and then I'm like, oh, what did I do? You know? Um, so I think that having some kind of structure and you know, getting, uh, you know, for me, I, I am still seeing patients and I'm doing so remotely. So that does keep me to a schedule. And I've actually mm -hmm. been very appreciative to be able to continue to work. So yeah, and I totally agree with the, the mental health piece. Um, uh, I And with that, I would say having some self-compassion for yourself right now, because- Oh my God, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a really, really hard time. And- you know, I think some people might be like, oh, I have all this extra time. I need to do all these extra things to be productive. But I think it's actually totally okay to not do all those extra things and even just be okay being you. Absolutely. I had this moment the other day, you know, I am a very, you know, so it's this weird balance of like, you know, I'm a well-known drag artist and I'm running for public office. So it's that feeling of like I have to be, Put together but also like this is a traumatic experience we're everyday reading of people that we know dying which is traumatic and scary and the worry of you know my parents are in their uh late 60s and early 70s so the fear of like oh what if they go to the grocery store and they get it 
you know so there's all that this trauma where my husband and i are both out of work so Mm -hmm. how do we pay the bill you know so there's all this anxiety so i had to allow myself that kind of self-care that you're talking about i'm just like okay the other day in the middle of the day just started crying like i was just walking down the hallway in my apartment i started crying i was like why am i crying oh because i'm i feel a little lonely I I miss human beings. You know, I love having my husband. I'm very lucky that I have my yeah. and, and our dogs. But you know, it's like it's, it's a traumatic. And then like the anxiety, that the, the emotional anxiety that comes with something like this is really heavy. So I just allowed myself to feel it and be like, "You're allowed to feel this way. Like it is not shameful." And the entire globe is going through this one way or another. You know, and I'm. Mm-hmm. It's very scary because I think it's so important not to beat yourself up if you have a, a day of the fuck it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like we have some comments. Oh, I, to... <laughs> I have YouTube pulled up and I have Facebook oh. pulled up too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the YouTube comments, uh, some people have recommendations in terms of resources that are available. So Gabe mentioned that Hertz is right now offering free car rentals to New York City healthcare workers. Um, and people with Aetna as a health insurance has Teladoc co-pays waived as well. So it seems like there's so many companies offering uh, benefits to a lot of people that we can also take advantage of during this time. Really cool. Um, that's great. I also, yeah. Well, I just Go for it. today about how the city of New York, you know, they're doing the three meals a day program for students. They're now offering a meal program for um, families and adults as well. So you can go, you can find the, um, at various public schools between 7 a.m. and, and 1.30 p.m. So if you're somebody who is out of work and you're struggling between rent and utilities and grocery bills, they're, they're, it, the, each box is for two days worth of um food and i think you can get the three so so that's a good service um to help get people through yeah that's, awesome. <laughs> that's amazing and i just wanted to piggyback on marty you mentioned just having these separate designated spaces to do different activities i think that's so important because our brains they just become so wired to the space and what we do in this space what has helped has also been to play with lights for me. So setting different mood lighting to do certain activities. Perfect. If you, yeah. So if you don't have, you know, some people who are in these studios um, where you have to sleep, eat, work, work out, everything in one space, um, I found that if you have a lamp or if you can play with the lighting a little bit, it changes the room completely and then shift as well. Yeah. <laughs> New York City room hack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Michelle. I have so friends who yeah. live out of the city and they have these big yards. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I know, these celebrities who they're posting on social media like, oh, no, I'm staying at home. And they're just gigantic yards. Um, and also, so Michelle, she wrote a comment on Facebook writing, where do you find that service? And I think she was referring to the food service. So oh, where yeah, is that go? Yeah. Nice for you. Um, if you go to my, it's on my Twitter or my Facebook, but mm-hmm. the, uh, so it, it says, the city of New York will now offer three, three free grab and go meals for um, people at locations that are already serving meals for students. You can text. Uh, so if, if Michelle wants to write this down, you can text food Um F O O D to eight seven seven eight seven seven, and that will tell you the location nearest you to pick up um, uh, food. Oh, that's amazing! And Roger from YouTube wrote, um, "During this time, it's just really important to be gentle with yourself." Totally agree. Totally. And I think just like you know, I, I have a little house party app, which is super fun which is nice um, yeah. <laughs> to play games. But this is a great way to connect with people in a new in a new way. We are so go, go, go and focus on work. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to just like connect with loved ones and, and, and have conversations, you know. Uh, and, and I think this reminds, I hope, as traumatic as this is, I hope that it slows us down a little bit to remember mm-hmm. 
in the long term when this is done to be to be reminded of like the preciousness of um life and, and how wonderful it is to have a hug from a friend or or a loved one and how how great it is to have those moments like really really um treasure them you know yeah and not knowing how quickly they can be taken away from us right oh yeah girl. like all this i like none of us were expecting this people had weddings vacations so much planned and the know. problem with that is though like none yeah. of us were expecting that but our government was expecting this and they neglected to yeah. do anything about it which is like yeah. the real issue like we could have prevented a lot of what's happening now had we had had we um, put mm-hmm. a competent leader in place, uh, so so I think it's important to remember, like there are systems in place for pandemics, and because we don't have that task force, yeah. uh, they were all let go. We mm-hmm. now have Derek Kushner leading press briefings about this, so so yeah. I think it's important to highlight that, like not to make it a political thing, but how we vote really can impact. Mm-hmm lives millions of lives Mm -hmm. and just recently you you probably saw the news what idaho they just passed anti-discrimination uh very discriminatory bills right on trans visibility day they on trans visibility day yeah uh idaho they passed two bills one discriminating girls and women or trans girls and women yeah, with sports team, and then the other one barred them from changing the gender and their birth certificate. And so I think as much as it is great to focus on COVID-19, what's happening, we also unfortunately should keep our eyes on what else is happening with our local government, city, well, state. Yeah, I mean, look at look at what happened in New York today in the in the budget. The, the, the budget that just passed today is horrible for the state of New York. Uh, cuts to Medicaid and and and, and anti bail reform things. It's really bad. And and as great as Governor Cuomo is doing, we still have the problem of rent for five and a half million people who live in New York City. Mm-hmm. That's not even counting the whole state. That's just in New York City. It's all businesses, home renters, apartment renters. And I understand the need for you know I live in a big corporate landlord building, and they are not being great about the rent. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I understand, you know, the need. Big corporate landlords like this can dip into um, uh, security deposits, I think. Mm -hmm. But the mom and pop landlords who say you own like 10 apartments in a building, you're not a very big, you're not like a corporate giant, you know. There should be a bailout plan so they can continue to pay their, their bills, of course. But there has to be a rent suspension rent freeze of some kind because this 90 day eviction thing is not gonna gonna cut it people aren't gonna be able to pay their bills you know um so people are out of work i just i so i think it's important to look at the government and like yes promos briefings every day look great but what's happening behind the scenes like that you know Mm -hmm. you have millions of people demanding this relief and it's not happening Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely Mm-hmm. Just a question for you guys. Where are you looking for news like this? Like, do you have any recommendations on how one might get informed with politics that might not be inundated with uh, everything that's uh, headline grabbing stuff? I think it's important to follow your local representative. Like, who represents you on the city, um, state, and federal level? Like, what, who, who is your city council member? Mine is Mark Levine, you know? Mm-hmm. Who is your senator and assembly person? Or if you don't live in New York, they might call the assembly something else, the, the House of Delegates or, you know, whatever. Um, so who are those representatives? And then who are your, who's your Congress member? And of course, our senators in, in, in federal are Gillibrand and Schumer. But who are, who are your representatives? And follow their, their pages and see like, what they're talking about. And then, and then look into to elected that are in that kind of outline area as well, and follow follow them because they'll post all the bills and every everything. Um, in New York, a great resource is the City and State. Um, it's called City and State. It's a it's a political magazine. Um, they have a lot of it's factual information. Uh, and like you said earlier, I think the New York Times is a great resource. Yeah, and. 
Twitter. What I do is I also make Twitter lists. It's like super old school, but I gather some of these Twitter folks uh, in different groups and categories. I have one for the technology industry. I have one for politics. And when I click the list, it just lets me see what they tweet and nothing else. And I know, yeah, I know if you go online, they have also made COVID Twitter lists that are with reputable doctors, with reputable scientists, rather than all of the media organizations that are throwing everything in headlines. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Great. Another question I have for us. We've touched on a lot of the questions I wrote in my notes, but um, just curious, how do you guys balance digital and physical hangouts with people? For myself, at least, uh, they call this Zoom gloom, where everyone's scheduling Zooms all the time to hang out with everyone. And I think it was Saturday, I got like four or five invitations at the same moment. They're like, let's hang out, let's do that. I'm like, oh, I there's like so much. And so for me, I'm a little overwhelmed by how many digital hangouts uh, that we've all created and we're inviting everyone to. And I'm just curious if you both have had challenges with that and how you've found a balance with just balancing digital life right now. Yeah. Yeah, I found it challenging to do, to go to Zoom groups when there's like a ton of people because I think when I... When I go to parties, I like to talk one-on-one -on -one with people, and it's just not possible to do that when you're, you know, zooming with like so many people at once. Um, yeah. So I've found that tough, and I think you know, if you're someone who has social anxiety or get nervous in large groups, that can be really tough to, yeah. to, to especially in the larger group settings. Um, so I think that's just something to pay attention to. Um, I, I'm, it's good to hear that you are, you know, staying connected with your friends. And it's, I think it's a good problem to have that there's too many friends who want to get in touch with you. Um, but I think keeping in mind also, like, what is, what is best for you in that moment? Because there are times where I'm like, yes, I have friends meeting right now, but what's best for me is to actually spend some time alone and recharge in other ways, like reading or um, you know, doing some of the self-care things um, mm -hmm. and then having other times where I'm like really excited to be spending time with friends. I've recently discovered playing like Settlers of Catan online with friends and, yeah. and it worked out well because we had like, just because it can bring people, you know, we had someone in Chicago, mm -hmm. Miami and Oakland, you know, playing. So, so yeah, I think there are tons of opportunities to connect virtually. And I also think yeah you can be discerning and, and think, okay, what would be best for your well-being and how do you want to kind of um, curate your experience? Yeah. How about you, Marty? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of Zoom birthdays over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when it got yeah. too overwhelming for me, the same thing, like I'm a very social person, but I also, it's a lot when there's like 20 people talking at once. So yeah. I would just be like, okay, I hung out enough. Like, good to see you. And then I, you know, people that I needed to connect with, I would FaceTime yeah. really later or on a three-day mm -hmm. FaceTime or something. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just part of self-care, you know, and also knowing mm -hmm. like, when it's, yeah, just knowing when it's time to hang up. And it's also a lot when you're like staring at your screen all yeah. day and I have to go stare at it more. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just think that's all into self care again. Like do what, like you said, uh, just do what works best for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And what's helped for me has been to, if uh, if I want to hang out with people in a certain chunk of time, I will put people in blocks and I'll kind of schedule them next to each other purposefully, so I have to cut off. And I'll budget, you know, adequate amount of time, give them an hour to hang out. But this way, it also prevents me from, if I do want to connect with so many people over the course of a week, uh, I don't end up spending four or five or six hours with one person and then end up having sacrificed me also wanting to see other people. So just in that block of time, I'm like, da, 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 da. And then if I need to chat with them more, I'll do a follow-up session. <laughs> it's a little robotic. <laughs> um, we have a couple more comments. So Roger uh, said that in the corner, I have a remembrance area. He is spending some time 
uh, or he's allocated some space in his home with candles to hang out with, um, to meditate, pray, and be grateful. And living alone, he also mentions, he definitely also misses a touch, the hugs, massages, holding someone's hand. Um, yeah, and we're definitely feeling the same way as well. And Devin Murphy says, I miss you, Ning. <laughs> Aww, I miss you too. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, what about uh, social media? So we are spending so much time on social media. This is being uh, live streamed on Facebook. It's being live streamed on YouTube. We're on Instagram Live. How have you guys found a balance with that? Take breaks. Yeah? Yeah. Take breaks. We'll we'll do like in our house. I feel like an old lady now. We'll do we play like board games every night now, which kind of like is yeah. okay. It's time to turn turn off our digital and just like play yeah. a, a board game and and connect, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's been been helpful. Like find out, or find, you know reading a book or mm. whatever. You know, I went yeah. to the grocery store the other day and I like never bring my phone with me, uh, just so I could like you know, really focus on the world around me and not be distracted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I mean, I find that I'm prone to like really um, getting sucked in and then all of a sudden all this time has passed, I'm like, what happened? Um, yeah. So I think know yourself and know if you need to set boundaries on your like social media consumption just because they make it so easy to just keep scrolling or clicking um, and so I've set like using the, um, the, I can't remember what they call it that, but the, the, you know, iPhones have that app screen time, the screen time app. Yep. Set, like, screen time. Song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that? you're locked out now. <laughs> it's so shady. Especially now yeah. like, you've been on your phone for 46 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I think if you're if you're someone who needs more kind of uh, like structure and boundaries around social media use, I think there are tools to help you with that. Um, if you're not someone who needs that, then I think you know yeah. use away. Um, I do think that there like to be mindful of how you're consuming social media because there is a ton of you know news out there that is really grim and there's yeah. a lot of despair and it can cause a lot of anxiety and so. Yeah. kind of checking in with yourself and seeing how is this impacting how I'm feeling and my mood and my state of anxiety. Um, and, and if it really is having a negative impact and really limiting that. Um, but yeah. also, I mean, social media goes the other way too. And there's all these really funny videos of cute animals and, and a lot yeah. of uplifting <laughs> stuff too. So I think there is that kind of balance to, to be found. Um, but yeah, I have found that I have, there was a period where I was using a lot more social media because I just wanted to mm. like read more and learn more about what was going on in the world. Yeah. Um, and then I had to kind of like take some yeah. steps and, and put some limits on that. Yeah, yeah. What's worked for me has been to not start off the day with social media. So the first, <laughs> making sure the first thing that I do in the day, I don't just open up Facebook, open up Instagram, because then I'm stuck there for like two hours, like da 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 da, and you know just like taking care of those like self nourishing activities, meditating, um, reading a book for ten minutes, and just setting an intention in the morning. It just completely transformed the way I utilize social media. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So we're going to switch over to talking a little bit about trauma response right now. So I'm going to pull up this chart. And one of my friends had sent me this chart. It is the Kubler-Ross model. And this has helped me a lot to understand how others are coping all around me um, and why it's so different. And so this model was first introduced by the Swiss American psychiatrist, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross in her 1969 book on death and dying, which was inspired by her work working with terminally ill patients. And so 
I won't walk through every single stage, but just talking a little bit about how we go through this spectrum of emotions as we start to understand and cope and manage whatever traumatic event that is happening in our lives. Some of us might quickly go into experiment and decision and we might bypass denial and frustration. Some of us might spend a lot more time just in the shock phase or the denial phase. And so as we take a look at social media, right, we still have people who are stuck in a denial phase. They're saying, you know, look at the flu. This is, you know, one of my friends actually, um, I, I followed her but she wrote that this was a part of a Russia misinformation campaign. I was just like, oh, I cannot. <laughs> uh, but this is happening. This is real. This is around us. But um, in no way, you know, is somebody else's way of coping or processing it something that we can control, right? We are all in a separate timeline. We're trying our best. And whenever I interact with people who might not necessarily process it the same way that I do, a great reminder for me is just to remind myself to, um, to just tell myself that everyone's just trying their best. And it might not look the same as it might for me or for myself or for Ning or for Marty, but everyone's just trying their best to cope with what's going on. Um, and then the next part that I want to talk about, <laughs> yes, thank you, Lucas. Lucas commented on YouTube. Uh, he was actually the one that shared with me that chart. It's so helpful. Um, uh, the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is the, um, the perspective that we can have, just changing our perspective of what is happening around us. I know it's really easy to wallow in the news, on TV, on social media, but uh, I was having a chat with my friend over this weekend and she had mentioned, well, what are the opportunities that we're getting at this moment, right? And I thought a little bit about that statement and I was like, that's really interesting. And we did talk about the opportunities that come and to kind of share with you, uh, what they might be. It could be on how we connect with people around us in our immediate surrounding. It could be ways of reevaluating relationship with the world. And it could be ways of, um, what was the other one? How do we spend more time and assess our emotional states? And so a couple suggestions here. Um, the first one is to deepen the relationship with people we live with. So for many of us, we are living with either roommates or with spouses or family members with kids. How can we take this opportunity to deepen the relationship with them? What has really worked with me and my family in Los Angeles when I stayed with my mom and my aunt last year for a couple months was to set up a routine dinner time with us with, together that we didn't stray away from, that we made sure that we were present for. And the first few dinners were really awkward because we've never done that. <laughs> but over time, you just get, you just kind of massage out those kinks. And the a great analogy is just imagining that we're all cans of soda and we have carbonation inside of us. These are our traumas, our thoughts, our emotions. And when we open it up, whether it's by communicating with people or doing activities, we get all this carbonation that now bubbles up, right? And the carbonation, it's gonna be there and we just have to let it out. And as a part of doing activities, being with people that might stir these things up, ultimately it's to help us process, ultimately it's bringing it up to surface so that we can build a relationship with them. And so, yeah, so setting routine. The next one is, if we have difficulties with people we're living with, so if we're struggling and people get on our nerves and we're just like, oh, like, I don't want to be with them, it is a moment to practice unconditional love. <laughs> it's so difficult. And, um, you know, we've always had that really tough roommate that it hasn't worked out with, where the family member just, just gets on our nerves. I think right now a great opportunity that lies in front of us is to cope 
by bonding over what's happening. You know, I think we share the same sentiments of fear, of worry, of anxiety with what's going on, with the uh, how we're not sure about what's happening. And those are great conversation starters to just talk about with people because we share that as a universal truth between us all. The next advice is around how we manage this time that we are uh, spending with ourselves, right? So if we're living in a studio by ourselves, we're just grouped up in our room by ourselves, we're spending hours and hours and hours a day just in our own thoughts. We can't get out, we can't interact with friends outside, we can't go to restaurants. And although it might be really easy to alleviate with, you know, FaceTiming or um, doing another Zoom meeting or hopping on social media, I think just like the carbonation example is we have these bubbles coming up, right? So as we're sitting by ourselves, you know, some of us might feel really uncomfortable by sitting by our, with ourselves. And instead of just brushing it off or just closing the soda lid, recognize what's coming up. And um, a couple ways of being able to process it is by one, journaling. So just asking yourself, you know, what is on your mind? What is on your heart? How are you feeling today? That's one of my journal prompts I use to just write, write at everything that I'm thinking about. And then another activity I do every day is just meditating, just sitting in silence. In the beginning, for those of you who just joined, in the beginning of the session, we spent 60 seconds to just sit in silence. And it felt so long. It's crazy. It's just a minute. But just spending one, two, three minutes of silence a day helps us to recognize, come to the present, be aware of our senses. Um, and then the last tip is to recognize the opportunity we have to reevaluate our relationship with the world. And so right now, although businesses are shutting down um, and people are getting sick, one of the really great things that's happening is that uh, our CO2 emissions have exponentially dropped. Um, in Madrid, the average nitrogen dioxide levels have dropped by 56%. And in New York, just last week, they reported carbon monoxide levels from cars in New York City were measured to have reduced by 50%. And so just in a month alone, we were able to drop 50% uh, of carbon monoxide levels in the air and just so crazy what we can accomplish. And I think right now is also a great opportunity to look forward towards and also vote on um, laws, bills, everything that's going to help support this new type of relationship we want to develop with the environment. And so instead of thinking of ways that we can continue to capitalize or continue to um, rob the earth of the natural minerals so that we can continue to create technologies. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us all to really reevaluate our relationship with nature and ultimately implement ways of coexisting as a partner rather than as a parasite or cancer on this planet. And so, those were just some tips of how to look at this, everything that's happening around us, instead of uh, something traumatic, but see it as a beautiful opportunity. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, great. And so the next part, we're gonna shift over to a little segment with Marty to just talk a little bit about employment, the sudden shifts in employment. And so, Marty, I know you from, you know, I've met you as a drag queen. We've hung out so many times, so long ago, too, when I was first in New York City. And now it seems like your life has completely shifted, you know, 180 degrees to being at home, doing these digital drag shows. And so I just wanted to ask you, how, how has that transition been for you? Uh, well, it's like I said earlier, you know, it's it's a it's a huge kind of shock to the system. You know, I was doing six shows a week uh, yeah. in bars and nightclubs, so surrounded by 
people all the time. And on top of that, I was doing campaign events and community board meetings and, and meetings for the different advisory boards I sit on. So I was very like, yeah. you know, my day would start at like nine in the morning out of the house and not get home until one or two in the morning, constantly surrounded by people. So that's a huge shift in like, oh, I'm interacting with literally thousands of people a week in person to my dogs and my husband. <laughs> that's it, you know, which is great. But it's, it's, it's a huge shift. Um, uh, and it's, it's shown me, you know, uh, it's reminded me like to be grateful, you know, be grateful uh, for, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for that life that I had. I can't wait to get back to it, you know. Um, it's definitely an anxiety being out of work and figuring out how to make money and how to pay bills and how to do, you know. Yeah. So, you know, shifting to online shows and, and helping for the best. But you know, it's it's a huge shift. It's it's a it's a it's a new it's a new way of living that I think we're gonna be in for a few months. And um And what has what has worked for you? I know I have a lot of friends that are performers, but they also work uh, in restaurants, bartenders. And right now they're just struggling to figure out what to do. And so sure. what do you recommend well, for some of these people? Yeah. If you're able to get unemployment, of course, do do that. It's a pain in the ass to to do it. You know, you're only allowed to go on the website on the day that they assign your last name and the website crashes and then you need to call the number and the number doesn't work and it's a whole exhausting mm-hmm. process. But I would try to get on onto that um, um, and see what kind of systems are, you know, I post a lot on my social media every day, like a different, that, you know, there's the freelancers union who's helping people. There's artists um, organizations that are providing, you know, funding for people, you know, so look into to the different resources that can help. Uh, there's a bartender's one that Dusty Ray Bottoms just posted the day that I shared, you know, so there's different resources to use, but I think people are going to, you know, People have to be empathetic to people are out of work, you know, not every bill is going to get paid right now. So in those circumstances, you can call your phone company or your credit card company and they they will work with you uh, right now, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a shift. Um, the whole restaurant and hotel industry is like yeah. not right now. Yeah. And also, I would say if you are, just on a side note, if you are going to order delivery, don't use Seamless or Grubhub or things like that. Call directly to the, the if, if it's a small bit, you know, if it's like a locally owned restaurant, because they take such a high percentage that these restaurants need all the help they can get. So I would call the restaurant directly to ensure that they're getting the full, um, uh, your full payment. The full payment. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually really good advice that I might do. I was uh, putting in some orders through Seamless, and it's 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 a uh, you know they incentivize you because they took out right all of them took out their delivery fees. They're like, yeah, just like you know, use us some more. But in reality, but they are profiting. It's just like so high. It's like thirty percent or something. Uh, and for a small local business that's only doing delivery now, that's a that's a big percentage that that could. Yeah. And, and how forgiving are their landlords going to be? And they say, oh, well, you're still open, so you should be able to pay. They should, you know, really utilize. Um, uh, I know it's much easier to go on the app, but. You're right. You you're the right. And then see to help with, with, with transmission stuff, uh, pay with your card over the phone. So there's not a, a tip on that. So there's not like that interaction of like. Mm. Person. You're right. That's really good advice. Yeah. And what about for you specifically doing these online shows? What has worked for you? You know, what has worked in terms of um, replicating some of the stuff that you were doing in the physical world? Well, I mean, it's very different, uh, but I'm not yeah. doing jump splits in my living room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, it's given me an opportunity to find different ways of being creative. Um, how, you know, I, I did a show with Bootsy last night on her Instagram. You know, just finding different ways to to explore drag in a new way that's entertaining for people. And for me, that's just about part of being in my 
routine, right? I'm doing these shows because I need to be in a routine. And if people are able to Venmo tip, I'm obviously super grateful and appreciative of it um, because, like I said, I'm out of work. But I also know that people are anxious and going through their own financial and emotional um, traumas right now. So if this, if my shows help with my routine, somebody's able to give a dollar possible, but also gives you an hour to just kind of like find some sort of normalcy in this chaos. And however normal my drag shows are, I don't know. But like if it gives you that kind of normalcy of, oh, I'm seeing a drag show, then that then then that's like done its job, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's only so much you can watch on Netflix. Go into the Instagram live. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many new shows coming out. I have to give it to them. I just watched. Do and they write grass. Oh <laughs> I just watched Tiger King. I was like, oh my god! I, like one there's night. There's so much, but you can watch it launched today for the next ten weeks every Thursday at six p.m. Uh, Jaws and Rice Lafusion and I uh, have a new show called Dragged available um, through Yahoo and uh, their their platform. So check it out. It's really good. Yeah. Just a little plug, little plug. Check it out. Are you going to be posting the links on your Twitter, your Facebook? Oh, it's, all, it's up there. It's all over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And do you want to give a plug to kind of your shows that you're doing throughout the week? When is it? Yeah, so we- kids on Tuesday and Fridays at 3 p.m. I do kids story time where we sing songs and, and read books and, and, and just have a good time. Um, together, that's a kids show, 3 p.m. and then Mondays and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. is the, like non kid friendly show. They're not like <laughs> vulgar, but I mean, I I don't like police my curse words <laughs> in that one where I do it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually watch some of your kids shows and they're so they're cute. So oh my god! <laughs> Parents send me videos like. Every single time you do it, they'll send me videos of like their kids, you know, doing the alphabet with me, or you know, I and I always say to the kids like, "What's your okay? Tell me what's your you know." We we I have these little books that I got these these little they're really cute, but they yeah. they you know ones about like tropical birds and ones about vegetables and fruits and you know whatever. So I say to people, "What's your favorite bird or what's your favorite vegetable?" And then the parents like send videos of their kids, and be like, "I love broccoli." It's really cute. It's very sweet. <laughs> It brings me, brings, brings me um, joy in this chaos. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So we have a question from Josh. Hey, Josh. Um, Ning, do you have any thoughts on guidance for nonprofits and how they can give their teams, who are also quarantined, how to seek out and find mental health support? We have shared our employee assistance program, but I'd like to provide something more proactive. Free memberships to Headspace? Question mark. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I know that that New York, um, I think New York State has put out like a um, like a hotline for people to call if you're feeling stressed or anxious. They, they've called out. They put out a call out for volunteer, you know, therapists. Um, uh, providers to offer those services, uh, like so, counseling therapy services. So there, there are. So that is available. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I think all the apps like Headspace or Calm or Ten Percent Happier, you know, like all of that, I think um, uh, can be helpful for people. And um, some of them have different promotions and may have, uh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, specific. Um, deals right now where it might be either like free or or discounted uh during this time so i think all of that because those promote um moments of uh mindfulness meditation well-being um uh, and and calmness so i think those are all really great um to have as an option Mm -hmm. um and then i think um most insurance companies and you know new york state and also the federal government has really they've been pushing for telemental health and so a lot of providers now are offering like telehealth services um so that might um so that could be a good option to to check out uh depending on what your insurance is um uh so there may be options there got it Marty, do you have any resources maybe for small businesses, nonprofits that might be useful? 
Um, I mean, I think something that we can do for nonprofits. Um, uh, I feel like the small businesses and nonprofits kind of know where to go. But for us as people, uh, if we have, if you happen to still be working um, and have like a little money, uh, people experiencing homelessness are still experiencing homelessness and are unable to self quarantine like us. The shelters are still occupied and at capacity. So if you're able to give money to specifically organizations um, like the LA Fournay Center for Homeless LGBTQ um, Youth, the Head Start Institute, which is home of the Harvey Milk High School, um, mm-hmm. the the um, the Trinity Place Shelter, the RDJ Refugee Shelter, there's all these organizations. If you can give to God's Love We Deliver, which is still delivering meals, New York um, Food Bank, City Harvest, these things that are providing meals for people in addition to the city meals that have just been announced. Um, if you're able to give even just five dollars, those organizations really need help now more than 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 ever. Mm. Yeah, that's really good advice. They have no space to go. They have no space to quarantine, and they are all vectors to carry this virus too. And so, I think helping them is going to ultimately help us as a collective society. Well, we the, the entire whole. The entire hotel industry is completely shut down right now. So homeless people should be housed in vacant hotel rooms right now to ensure that they are able to self-quarantine and are taken care of. I know. Yeah, that is great. I know I've seen a couple petitions up and there's a couple hotels. I know Four Seasons in New York opened themselves up for healthcare workers, Mm -hmm. Um, but... Also, you know, we have people who have to go to grocery stores, who have all of these different tasks that, you know, they have to do to keep our society running. And, you know, uh, California just uh, labeled them as essential workers. And so they're now able to get some of the additional benefits. Um, And I think we're just now starting to realize how important they are and Hopefully, if you are a business or if you offer any benefits to um, healthcare workers, that you can also extend these benefits to these core, core essential workers who, if not for them, we won't be having food to eat. We won't be having garbage taken out. We won't have all these things that keep a society moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see what else we have. Do, do, do. I'm gonna just plug in my phone. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. I think we got all the questions from social media. So if you guys have any more questions, let us know. Do, do, do. So maybe question for you guys. What are what are some really interesting things have that have happened for you? coming out of this? Have you been able to connect with people who you haven't spoken to in a long time? Has anything serendipitously happened? I'm just curious. Um, I mean, it's definitely been, you know, like I said earlier, we're all super busy, so it's been nice to find new ways of connecting with my my husband and, and, and communicating with each other in new ways, and also, like, figuring out new boundaries. Like, okay, I've seen you for... 15 hours in a row, I'm going to go in the other room, you know, um, uh, and, 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 and figuring out uh, communication skills within yeah. our relationship, which has been like a really exciting uh, yeah. day, you know. Yeah. What has worked or what is a, some advice that you might share to someone who lives with their significant other? I, I think boundaries are the most important thing, you know, and that's part of like the routine. Like I have my set routine each week that I set up for myself and he has his and, mm-hmm. and finding that time to come together and like really connect. He has a, an office in our apartment that for the past five days, he's been like completely re do it, which is, yeah. 
but you know, he like he had paint here that he's just, he, he's been wanting to paint it and hasn't had time. So now he's painted the office and now he's going through all of his stuff and figuring out what he wants to get rid of, what he wants to keep, what we can donate to different places, you know. So that's been a really great project um, for him that that is, um, you know, great. So that's like him and his routine and me and mine. And then um, having that time of like uh, telling him like, okay, I'm going to have the living room for this hour because I'm going to do this video thing. And that's like a boundary being like, let's like negotiate when me using this common space, you know, now. And uh, and then having our game night at, at night, which like brings us together where we can talk about like our, fears and anxieties and excitements and joys that we've, you know, and yeah. um, it's been, I don't know, I think we're always so on the go. I love it. It's like what you talked about when you lived with your mom and your aunt, just finding those simple yeah. joys of like community yeah. and family and, and relationships. Um, it's been nice. Yeah. How about you, Ning? Has anything serendipitously happened? Um, or I know for you, when we're talking about relationships, your boyfriend is not living with you, right? And right. he's in Chicago. Yeah. 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 So how has I mean, how have you guys been able to stay connected? Um and you know, not feel so necessary to just like fly over there in a heartbeat and even put yourself at risk to go through the uh, airport. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think um definitely like calling and facetiming has been helpful yeah. um what we have been doing is watching like tv shows or movies together and oh, like, yeah. they play at the same time we like count down uh, and then be on the phone <laughs> and then, and, and, yeah it's a way to kind of feel like we're still together and because we'll just give commentary as we go um i've been seeing so much hype about tiger king that we decided to start watching yes <laughs> <last night>. um <laughs> Yeah, so definitely had a lot to to kind of discuss and chat. So, um, so yeah, I think we're trying to make the best of the situation. I mean, he's an emergency medicine doctor, and so if we were living together, we, I mean, all of his coworkers are basically staying in hotels or staying elsewhere because they don't want to get their families yeah. sick. So, even if we were in the same place, we may not, you know, be living together actually. So, in a sense, it's it's maybe reassuring to know that we're um i guess you know keeping each, each other from infecting each other in that sense yeah. um so yeah i think that's been that's been just an adjustment um i think uh opportunities have been like i think connecting with friends who live further away um mm -hmm. and having kind of group hangouts with people who are in just very different parts of the country um, I think that's been a nice plus versus, you know, when you hang out in person, you're limited to who's physically available in the city yeah. and then people who aren't there can't really participate. But this has opened up that opportunity for people who aren't here to, to really participate. Mm -hmm. um, when I was thinking about your question about like opportunities here, I think, mm -hmm. um, I think for most people, they probably have more flexibility in their days. So... I think um, there can be an opportunity to think about, think with more intention how you want to set your day and your schedule and how you want that to be, rather than it being mandated by, you know, commuting for this amount of time and having to be, you know, here versus there. Um, so really, I think taking ownership and control over how you want your day to be structured, because I think you do have a say now. Um, and with that, I think also keeping in mind what your values are um, and what's important to you. Um, and then, you know, designing your day to really lift those values and maximize that. Is it connecting yeah. with people? Is it um, kind of intellectual pursuits? Is it, you know, your work and being productive? Is it physical, mental health? I mean, I think there's a lot of potential opportunity. We could see this as an opportunity to really, you know, design the life that you want, given, given the circumstances and reprioritize what's important and make time for that. Yeah, really good points, really amazing points. Um, I I wanted to add to that, but then I had this train of thought that just went in one, <laughs> it just went, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> And that's totally okay, self-kindness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely love your advice, just like slowing down, you know, just 
We're so, we're just in a rush, 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 rush all the time. But this is an amazing, beautiful opportunity to slow down. We have to walk at most like 20 steps to go to our door or the kitchen, right? So what does that look like? We don't have these commutes anymore. And at the same time, I was listening to a podcast with um, the founder of WordPress, and he was talking about remote work and how remote work has these different stages. And the first few stages, which are more um, these rudimentary early stages, they are businesses who try to replicate what you do in the physical world digitally, tit for tat. And why that becomes really hard is because right you're forcing people to stay online at a certain hour from like eight to five you're tracking their keyboards you're doing all these things trying to replicate what would be almost like a punch card system all these different systems but once you develop trust you develop systems of working um it becomes different actually now from the physical world you start leveraging digital but also physical and how does that come together and so uh, some really interesting things he had mentioned about like Zoom, for example. So I use Zoom for work and we do this thing where everyone mutes, right? So it's like, if you're not talking, everyone mute, let us just listen to, you know, this one person speaking. But his advice was maybe just not mute everything. Like you can't do that in real life. So how do you bring that physical aspect into the digital aspect? How do you replicate these more organic you know, thoughts and, you know, if a child's screaming, it's like, let's talk about it. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> um, but another way that he mentioned was just this shift of having trust, calling it asynchronous work, meaning we're not synchronized with each other. People can work in the evening, people can work in the daytime, even if they work in the same time zone. And ultimately, as you mature in this remote capability, it is to empower all of these different ways of working because we're all so different. And that is really leveraging and creating this new type of environment, this relationship with the digital space. And so instead of really replicating what we have in the physical space in quarantine, how do we find this balance, right? How do we find a balance of maybe taking a little bit of it, but creating this new normal? and slowing down and reassessing it and seeing what works. Yeah, amazing. So we have one last question. Michelle asked, oh, this one's pretty political. Do you feel that Trump's attempt to reopen the economy by Easter is far too soon? <laughs> well, he's now said April 30th, but I yeah. think that's even too soon. You know, and I also think, um, Look at what's happening. Take, for example, well, Mississippi now has the highest hospitalization of, of any state, uh, I, I think, which is like kind of crazy. Um, and then you have New York, which has like more cases than most countries. And then you have Florida, where they're on lockdown, but churches are considered essential. So potentially thousands of people can gather together. So Trump's handling of this is going to have... Uh, not just obviously the economic repercussions we're seeing, but hundreds of thousands of people are going to die because of this. So we need to stop this for now during this pandemic. We need to stop like doing it state by state and issue a national lockdown where everyone's on the same page because we're not going to get a hold of this if, okay, well, Alabama's doing this and Nebraska's doing this, but California's doing this. It's not, it's not possible to contain this when people are still able to, you have people who are like, okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to, you know, say, I live in New York, but I'm going to go stay with my family in Idaho now. Well, now you potentially have, in, by going to the small town in Idaho, infected an entire town. Mm -hmm. so that's why there needs to be, and I, I, I get that they're like, oh, but the airline industry, this industry, that, that industry. Human life is more important than an industry. We can rebuild that and figure that out. There needs to be a national lockdown. So Trump's attempt at doing anything right now, Michelle, is completely. This is what this is what we get for um, electing a, a reality show host. Yeah. With no experience. 
and and uh, putting into power around him a lot of people who don't have experience. They've run companies, but they've never yeah. worked in politics. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be in this for a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. And I would agree with that. I think, you know, as hard as social distancing has been, we know that it has, that it is effective. It helps. It works. Yeah, it totally works. It, it's effective. It just takes time to really see the full benefits of that. And if we don't give it the full amount of time, then, like Marty said, tons and tons, like hundreds and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people may die. Um, and then all of the social distancing that we've done already, you know, it would have uh, been limited in its usefulness if, if it's not, you know, carried to, to completion. Absolutely, absolutely. And, so, and another good point is if we're all dead, then there's nobody to <laughs> fly on airplanes or stay in fancy hotels. Like we you're need right. to be alive to, to enjoy those things. You're right, you're right. And like Marty said, we can rebuild businesses tomorrow in a year from now. And even if it is really difficult, if we decimate our entire population and take with it, the older people who know everything, right? And they've worked and they've done everything. And some of them are actually still working. Uh, we're taking away really with them a lot of this legacy knowledge, this history we have had. And we really need to do our best to help protect, especially the people who are most vulnerable. Yeah. Amazing. So that takes us to the end. Do you guys have any last words of advice, some bit of wisdom for the people watching? Uh, no, I just want to say, Ning, thank you so much to you and your boyfriend for being doctors and being on the front lines of this and helping people. Like that's that's so um, important and and wonderful. Uh, uh, so thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's, I mean, it is a privilege to yeah. to be able to take care of of patients. Um, I think especially emergency room doctors are really the front line. Um, mm -hmm. I've fortunately been able to see my patients virtually since I'm doing all outpatient work right now. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 it's but yeah, I think right now it's totally understandable if you're feeling irritable, grumpy, cranky. Um, it's hard to be cooped up at home in, in small apartments um, with you know people that you normally don't see 24/7. Um, so it's totally understandable that tensions can be higher. There can be more conflict, um, and um, and 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 so I think just knowing that, like, a lot of people are experiencing this, um, it's understandable. Uh, you can actually, um, once you're aware of it happening, then you can actually change your relationship with it um, and start to make different choices about it. Um, mm -hmm. I think thinking about harmony of the household is really important right now. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of kids and adolescents and I'm telling parents to really, um, you know, is, is it worth that fight? Because we want to keep people out of, you know, the emergency rooms, the hospitals. And so that does require some harmony at home. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so thinking about, thinking about that, especially, and then I'll go back to one of my first points and, and that's kind of, self-compassion, be kind to yourself. This is a really hard time. It can be easy to be extra hard on yourself, but really I think what's needed right now is that compassion and kindness for yourself. Amazing. And Michelle also says, thank you guys so much for your work on the front lines. You're all very appreciated. Yeah. Thank you so much for you. Together. I know. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. And we had so many people uh, stay on and pop in and out. And um, I'm so just so amazed by people like you guys, me, Marty, for just helping share wisdom, you know, helping to get your voice out there to help people. And so the last question is, how can people find you? Marty, how can people find you? Uh, all the social media uh, stuff, it's <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's at um, Marty G. Cummings. Easy breezy. Yeah. Easy breezy. How about you, Ning? Um, so I have, 
I guess I would might be the opposite where I haven't fully developed my like online persona. I mean, I guess I do have LinkedIn. I am socially on like Facebook and Instagram, but I'm not using those for like professional, mm-hmm. you know, means right now. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> So you you take Ning for this session, and <laughs> that's all you get. Um, and then you can find me. I'm on Instagram at Stephen Wakabayashi. And when I share this out, I'm going to try to figure out how to like put all of our tags on. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Waku W A K U U because my full name would not fit on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it was just like everything but the last letter. I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah so with that thank you guys so much i really thank appreciate you, so you. Uh, this was amazing and yeah thank you be safe and healthy thank you guys yeah thank you so yes. much <laughs> be safe be healthy and have compassion yeah. <laughs> bye. Amazing. bye bye amazing episode and so if you want to get in touch with me you can reach me on my Instagram at Stephen Wakabayashi or Twitter and Facebook at Waku, W-A-K-U-U. I always love hearing your feedback and thoughts, so send me a message. I also publish a weekly mindfulness newsletter at mindfulmoments.substack.com if you want to hear what's on my mind and links to things I discover online that inspire me every single week. And if you enjoyed this, please leave a rating and review. It just takes a few seconds. I'll take a look at it and send you some love once you do that. And so with that, so much love for you and hope your day can be a little bit more mindful. (laughs) Bye now.